Now I've written four more problems down that are all related to each other. They all involve some version of 6 divided by 2. But in each one, the decimal is just a little bit different. And I want to show you how much difference it makes when you put an extra, de an extra decimal point in, or if you put a zero in front of a number with a decimal, or if you leave the decimal out. Every one of these is going to have a little bit different answer. And so this, this is to illustrate to you how much difference the decimal makes. Now, we all know that 6 divided by 2 is going to give us 3. So every answer down here is going to have a 3 in it. We might get 30, we might get 3,000, 300, 3, or 3 tenths, 3 hundredths, or 3 thousandths, but we'll get some version of 3. Or 3 multiplied by, possibly multiplied by 10, or 3 divided by 10. So let's, let's see what happens. The decimal is going to make the difference. So we'll start with this first one. In order for us to do 6 tenths divided by 2 tenths, we've got to move the decimal point in each one place to make the divisor whole number. So we're really just dividing 2 into 6. So in that case, we're going to get 3. The first one just came out to be a plain old 3. Well, let's look at the next one. Still 0.6 or 6 tenths, but this time it's divided by two hundredths instead of just two tenths. So in this case, we have to move the decimal two places to make it a whole number. Well, if we move it two in the divisor, we have to move it two in the dividend also, and I can't move it two unless I add a zero. So when I do that, then I'm actually dividing two into 60, because the decimal is now at the end, and when I divide 2 into 60, I'm going to get 30. So that extra little place there, dividing by 2 hundredths, instead of dividing by 2 tenths, changed my 3 to a 30. Now, this next one we're dividing by 2 thousandths, but I changed my 6 tenths to a plain 6 too. So I changed two things in that one. So I've got a plain 6, dividing the plain 6 by 2 thousandths. So to do that, I need to make my divisor a whole number, so I have to think about how many places to move my decimal. So since I've got three decimal places, I'm going to have to move it three places. So I have to move it three places inside too. Now this time, my six was a whole number inside, so the decimal is behind it. So to move it three places, I've got to add three zeros. So once I do that, I'm now dividing 2 into 6,000 because when I moved it over that became 6,000. So this answer will be 3,000. Let's look at one more example. This one is 6 tenths divided by 2. Here I've already got a whole number that I'm dividing by. Remember, if you're dividing by a whole number, you don't move your decimal at all. So it just stays where it is, or the 2 stays the way it is. And we don't move it inside any since we didn't move it outside. We just bring it straight up, and then we say 2 goes into 6, and we get our 3. So in that case, our answer is 3 tenths, and you might write it like this. So you can see how different our answers came out. We had a 3, a 30, a 3,000, and a 3 tenths. So you have to be very careful with your decimals and make sure you always make your divisor a whole number. If your divisor is already a whole number like this last one, you just go ahead and start dividing. If you have to move the decimal to make your divisor a whole number, and the divide, then you've got to move it the same number of places in the dividend. Now let's do a division problem that's not going to come out even, so it's not going to end like our other problems have. So we're going to have to stop at some point and do some rounding. So in this particular one I said divide 88 hundredths by 81 thousandths and round our answer to tenths. 
So to get us started, I need to make my divisor a whole number. So I've got to move my decimal three places. So I've got to move it three places on the inside. Well, since I've got 0.88, that takes care of two places, but I need to add one zero. So I'm going to be dividing 81, when I've made that a whole number, into 880. So my decimal's now at the end here, and I'm supposed to bring it straight up. Now let's move over just a bit. Okay, let's start dividing. 81 will not go into 8, but since I'm still on the whole number set, I don't have to really put a zero there. 81 will go into 88 one time. 1 times 81 is 81. I subtract and get a 7. Okay, now I'm ready to bring down my next number, so I bring down a 0. 81 will not go into 70, so I have to put a 0 up here to hold the place. And now I need to keep on going, I don't, so I need, I'm going to have to add a zero over here so I'll be able to see what my tenths are going to be. So then I can bring that zero down and say 81 into 700. Well, to estimate, 8 will go into 70 8 times, so let's see what 81 times 8 would be. That's 648, so that's going to be okay, so we'll put our 8 here. Then when I subtract 8, I'm going to have to borrow from that 70 and make it a 69. And make that a 10. 8 from 10 will leave 2. And uh, 4 from the 9 is going to leave 5. Or 64 from 69 will leave 5. So I have 52 left. Now, it's not coming out even. And I want to round the tenths. Now you might say, well I can stop because I've got tenths. I have 10 and 8 tenths. But what you have to do when you're rounding, you always have to go one place farther than you want so you can round back. So if you're rounding the tenths, you've got to carry the division out two decimal places or to hundreds before you can round. Before I can round, I've got to carry my division out two decimal places so I can round it back to tens. So that means I've got to keep going. So whenever I want to keep going, I have to add another zero on here. So I put another scope. Actually, I don't have this lined up very well, but I've used the zero. It's right here. So now when I add another zero and bring it down, that'll take care of it. I'm using it there. Okay. So now I'm dividing 81 to 520, and the estimating worked before, so we'll hope it'll work this time. If I estimate and divide 8 into 52, that's going to go 6 times, so let's try that. We put a 6, 6 times 1 is 6, and 6 times 8 is 48. So when I subtract, to borrow, 6 from 10 leaves 4, and I have to borrow again here. 8 from 11 leaves 3. So I have 34 left. Now actually what I have left doesn't really matter because I'm going to stop and round. Okay, so I'm going to round to tenths. So the 8 is in the tenths place, which tells me my answer is either going to be 10.8 or 10.9. And in this case, I'm going to write what happens down here since I'm just about out of room up there. I got 10.86 before and, I, and it was still going on. That's going to round to 10.9 because the 8 is in the tenths place. When I look at that 6, it's 5 or more, so it means to round my 8 up to a 9. So rounding to tenths, I would get 10 and 9 tenths.